does not have any additional capacity. It does not have any additional load. But whatever force it was resisting at least, that much force it will continue till ultimate force. So that's the difference. So it doesn't mean that the capacity here will become zero. Capacity will not increase. It will become constant at any point. Okay. Yes. Sir. Different between yielding and mechanism. Okay. Let's take one by. So difference between yielding and mechanism. Can you tell? Vijay's doubt is. What is the difference between yielding and mechanism? Yielding occurs in material or a section or a member. So yielding will occur in one member. But yielding of one member may or may not make our structure mechanism. When it will become mechanism? When it does not need any additional force to deform. Okay, then it is a mechanism. It will require more force to yield further, sorry, to deform further, then it is not a mechanism. But sir, in both the cases, even when we apply the load, the deformation is going to take place. Take, take place. But one member and whole structure. For example, let us take that simple here. Suppose yielding takes place. So yielding has taken place. But it does not become a mechanism. Mechanism will be when there are sufficient number of plastic hinges formed in the structure. Okay. So when sufficient number of plastic hinges are yielding at sufficient number of points in sufficient number of members will take place, then it will become a mechanism. Okay. Till then, it may have developed hinges. The members, some of the members might have yielded, but still it can continue to resist more load, additional load. This additional is important. When it is not able to resist any additional load, then we call it mechanism. When it is not able to resist any load, then what we call failure. Okay. So we are talking about additional force. Failure and mechanism. Okay, so mechanism as soon as let us say hinges form here, it will become a mechanism. Okay, but that doesn't mean that it has failed because whatever force here was there, Qy at this, it will continue to resist that much force. Okay, when the failure will occur, when some member here will not be able to resist any load. When will that happen? When maybe here or somewhere this reaches theta u. When it reaches theta u then the failure will occur. So first yielding will occur. Then yielding will occur at some point. Then it will become a mechanism. And then at some point it will reach theta u. When it will reach the structure will, uh, or some point in the structure will reach theta u, that means it has failed. Okay. There is a debate. Some people say that just one point failing can be say our structure has failed. It has failed. If one column fails, here I have found two columns. So if one column fails, it will come down. But suppose there were multiple columns, then can we say, or if there is failure of a beam, in a building which we have taken later, suppose this beam rotation here, this reaches theta. Can we take <coughs> theta? Theta u means what? This beam is going to collapse. But collapse of this beam, does that mean that the structure has collapsed? No. Not necessarily. Okay. But when you are designing a structure, will you accept a structure where one of the beams is going to collapse? So for a designer, what is the limit of state? That in no member, the rotation should exceed theta u. As soon as theta u in any member is exceeded, the limit of state is crossed. Okay. The design is unacceptable. <coughs> okay. 
So this may not be actual collapse of the structure. Just collapse of one beam may not lead to collapse, may or may not lead to collapse of the structure. But we are not going to allow in design any of our member to exceed ultimate rotation capacity. Sir, okay. if this is the criteria that none of the members should uh, exceed theta u. Right. Then why we are going for a strong columnic beam joint? Then <coughs> we can limit the uh, in beam theta u. Then it, it can ensure that the other possibility is that the column sealed here and in this column it reaches theta u. That is the other possibility. Hmm. Either this can happen or this can happen. Yes. Okay. In this case, we know theta u is very small because it is column subjected to axial force. And in the last class, I have left you in between here. I will draw it there. So what will happen to the moment rotation curve when the column is subjected to different loads, different axial force? Axial force 0, axial force less than balance force, and axial force more than balance. So has anybody completed that? It looks like what you say is class and Okay. So I will also leave you to think. When you think and come back to the class for this question, I will discuss. But you have to think. I have already done this once in the class. <coughs> if I do two, three times more, you will again solve it. I did have less, you are thinking. So think that. Come back to the class after thinking, then I am going Okay, so that's why we want strong column big beam. Okay, so so that we get more data. What else was your question? Like in this question, during the uh, when the hinges are from here, hmm. uh, that hinges too, hmm. we have find uh, Q Y. Right. Q. Then also it is taking a load Q U. We have find out how it is when when uh, it is when hinges are from it will be mechanical. Then how it is going from Q Y to Q U? That's what I was explaining. There is a difference between plastic hinge and hinge. Okay, what is the difference? Hinge does not take any load. Plastic hinge takes a moment equal to m by and continues to take that till theta u is reached. So when the plastic hinge forms in our beams in this problem which we have discussed in the last class. So at Qy the hinges have formed here. But that doesn't mean that it will drop to zero. It will still continue to take that much force. Till theta u. Theta u is but that force will be remain Q, it will get deformed up to theta u. But right. force will be Q, Q y. It, 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 not be, uh, it should not be Q u. Okay. So you mean to say that Q u is different than Q y. Ah. Suppose the hinge property here is like this m versus theta. <coughs> this is m y and this is m. So what will happen? It will not continue, and the other possibility is that this is horizontal. Mm. So when this is the situation, that the moment is not increasing after yielding, mm. it remains constant after yielding, then Qy will also remain constant. Ah. But suppose after My, the moment still increases, what we call a strain hardening. Yes. <clears throat> so then our Qy will also increase, because Qy depends on this moment. The moment which is developing here, mm. if this moment is increasing more than m by after yielding, so then our q y will also increase. And here, when this will reach theta u, our q y will reach q u. But sir, when plastic hinge uh, will form, it reaches up to its capacity, where it will increase and equal to 1. Once it reaches which capacity? Section capacity. Oh, no, se that? section capacity is also different at cracking. Section capacity is different at yielding. Ah. Section capacity is different at ultimate. Okay. So 
section also has three capacity. When so when we we say DCR is equal to one, we are talking about yield capacity. Okay. So we are checking with the yield capacity. So when the DCR with respect to the yield capacity of the member will be equal to one, then yielding will happen. plastic hinge will form. Okay. But that doesn't mean that after that the moment will remain constant in all the cases. In ideal case, which we also call So please remember this elastic perfectly plastic. In short, we call it EPP, elastic perfectly plastic. It is also called elastoplastic. These words are used. So designate this condition. What does that mean? That after yielding, the curve is flat, perfectly plastic. Perfectly plastic means what? That there is no additional force; still it goes on deforming. Okay, like a fluid. As a fluid flows with a constant, uh, if you give a constant air, it will continue to flow. No, no need to increase. Okay. So similar behavior is there in metals also. Okay. So that we call perfectly plastic. But this is not, this is as I said that this is ideal case. Not always it will happen. In some cases, the moment capacity after yield will increase. That we call a strain hardening. Like you have seen in case of the steel, the stress after yielding increases. That is strain hardening. Some of the materials like concrete reaching the peak and then it reduces. Okay, so that is the strain soft. So these three types of behavior are possible. <coughs> so our section also can have either elastic perfectly plastic behavior, m versus theta. So this is our type one. Okay, it can have like this. This is type two, and it can have. This is type three. Sir, when we are giving hinges, they are plastic hinges. Mm. We are considering it as a yielding. Means. Uh, yes, yielding will start. Ah. At that point, we will put hinges. Ah. Mm. When yielding is formed, there is a further capacity. It can go up to MU. Right. Then, but we are considering that mechanism is formed there. Right. Why? Because it is again take too much up to MU. Okay. Here, what do we mean by mechanism? Mechanism means without uh, applying load, it will go this way. That is that is ideal. Ah. Another type of mechanism may be there, where after formation of the mechanism, force is required, but that force is very little. Before yielding, lot of force is required to deform it. Yes. After yielding, very little force is required. That is our type two. Okay. Very little additional force. Very little additional force. That additional force we are not considering now. We are considering. That's why you, we have taken M U now. <coughs> That's why we took Q U, and Q U may be higher than Q Y. Q U may be lower than Q Y. So the mechanism which is in your mind is the ideal mechanism, where up to yield it is elastic, and after that it is fully plastic. So that is ideal case. But not all members, all structures will behave in this manner. Sir, yes. So the second is rehardening is applicable when uh, our steel at yielding point our steel yield. Uh, third one is when our Uh, not always like that. Okay, generally, uh, if we are having uh, steel with sufficient strain hardening and we are designing under reinforcement, then what we are doing is that. Okay, but if the reinforcement is very low, then it may happen that even with steel yielding, we may not get a strain hardening. Okay, so it it will depend upon the section. So in some section we may get a strain hardening, in some section we may not. Okay. Yes. Sir, in that figure, in the injured, in that form, 
So our steel itself is having a strain hardening, you can see here. That is one reason. And then you have seen that as the pressure increases, the uh, neutral axis sets up. So even if this force is still the same, due to shifting of the neutral axis, due to increase of the neutral axis, sorry, increase in the lever arm, the moment is Example, we have found find out the deflections due to bending of beam. And right. In another case, we have found out the due to bending of column. Right. And in that case, we have assumed beam as a rigid. Right. So when uh, Q form was acting in this direction, how uh, how as this joint will be rigid, hmm. how the how the beam will fall like this. Okay. So the question is that when our beam is rigid. And column is flexible. And so we have also uh, assumed that uh, below point has a pin point, right? Which point? Like below point. Yes, this is pin. This is pin. So this is Q. This is Q. In this direction. Okay. So what will happen when you apply this? This beam will try to move in this direction. This column at the bottom, this will deform like this, and not like this, it will deform like a cantilever because bottom is pin. This will deform like this, and the top column that is also cantilever that will deform like this. So we can see that total displacement. Here beam is not deforming, only the column is deforming. So due to deformation of the column also, there is contribution to the lateral displacement. Due to deformation of the beam also, there is contribution to the lateral deformation. We add the two. Yes. आपको ये कैसे पता चला कि हमें सबको कंडीशन चेंज करनी है काम काम दिस को दिस ये सबको हमने यहाँ पे लगा दिया इसको एक्सटेंड कर दिया फिर इसको ट्रीट कर दिया Okay, so the question is, how can we say that this situation is similar to this situation? That that's what your question is. That how these two are similar. Okay. You should look in the <coughs> forces acting in different members. So, if the forces acting in different members, bending moment diagrams of different members are same, okay, then their deformations are also going to be same. Properties are already same. Same properties are the same. If the bending moment is also same, shear force is also same. So, the deformation is also going to be same. If the forces and deformations in two structures are same, they are identical. Okay, so here you can see that the reactions will be like this. You can obtain these reactions. Is there any doubt here? No, no. And the bending moment diagram, it will be like this. And here, agree? Yes. What will happen here? This will apply. Okay, and to counterbalance this, we will get reactions like this. Okay, so here we are going to have an input like this. And these values you can work out. Values will also be same. 
So if the, the members are subjected to same banking movement, same shear force, okay, those have the same properties, so the structures are same. The function profile is also same. Only thing is that it has been here, it will shift. Here, this point will remain in the center. It is not going to, the center is not going to literally shift. In first case, the deformation will be so in the first case, the deformed shape will be like this. You agree? So this point has moved. The center point has moved. Here the center point will not be able to move, but the bottom point will shift. Here we are measuring the displacement like this. This point remains at its <coughs> original position. Here what happens? The center remains at its original position. So we have to measure displacement on both the sides. This side also, this side. This will be our total displacement. Thanks, sir. Making a clear is a force applied on structure. Hmm. There should be one is a Translation equilibrium, summation equilibrium, and uh, one is moment equilibrium has to satisfy. Here, when we apply Q on this, the structure is going in x direction. So, this is Q. So, Q minus Q is equal to 0. This is V. This is V. That is also equal to 0. V minus V is equal to 0. You take moment about any one. So, then the relationship between Q and V will come out to be in such a way that the moment is also zero. Same thing we do here. For calculating this V, we are using moment equilibrium. When this the beam is going along this direction, hmm. till, we, uh, till where it will go? Like in first case you are talking or in the second case? Second case. Second case. So if this is the case, if your structure is only this, okay, so it will continue. Here we have said that the beam is rigid, yes. but we have not said that the beam is infinitely strong. You understand the difference between rigidity and strength? It will not deform, but it can fail, it can develop hinges. Yes. Okay, so when the hinge will form, either in the beam or in the coil, till that point, okay, it will continue to deform. And after formation of the hill, the plastic rotation will start. So that plastic rotation till any of the beam or column reaches its ultimate rotation. Till that will continue. Ultimate rotation at what point? Wherever hinge is forming. Suppose hinge is forming in the beam. Ah. So what will happen? Even if the beam is rigid, rotation is going to form. Rotation is going to take place. Even if it is strong. Sorry, even if it is rigid, but it has yielded. So after ending, what will happen? The rotation in the beam will occur. That rotation you will monitor till it reaches the end. Suppose the beam is stronger than the column, then the plastic hinge will form in the column and it will continue till the time reaches in the column. So you look at these structures from all angles, you should be very clear, okay, confident and comfortable with these structures. Whatever way those are yielding, you should be able to handle all the situations. Now, can I ask you to extend it? So this third section. Uh, this one? Yes. Third okay. soft means. Yes. Sir. Huh. So what will be the ultimate means? So till yield point, we have a capacity of F by F. But after that, it is dropping now. Right. 
So we have considered in this case that uh, our means forces increasing because of the state hunting. But there is no, no, a strength softening. Force is yes. reducing, displacement is increasing. Force is reducing. Right. Oh, sorry, displacement is increasing, but force is reducing. reducing. But actually the force is at T1. So how we can do We are questioning how force can reduce. No, 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 I'm not asking about the force. Force may reduce because of the section properties. Okay. Because, but the, the thing is, if uh, we have this... Then how, how the structure will survive? Yes, sir. Yes. Because force is more quality in the Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. So tell me this question. You have a column. It has a plastic hinge. And this plastic hinge is of tight thing. Yes. I am applying the force here. Okay. So, it will reach this. If I go on increasing the force, I reach there, and as soon as I will reach there, and if I keep this force constant, what will happen? It will fail. Suddenly it will reach Q, okay, and it will fail. Okay. Huh? But it is not behaving like this. No, why it is not? It will behave like that. It will behave like that. Okay, but this type of behavior, we call <coughs> force controlled behavior. Where force we can increase, yes. but we cannot reduce. So this is a force controlled behavior, where force we can gradually increase. Okay, and as soon as it will reach Fy, it will fail. Then we can't control the displacement, it will become unstable and it will fail. Sir. Okay, so this is this point is indicating instability. Okay, the point of field is indicating point of instability. The force will reach there, and the member will snap. Okay. If we change this, rather than applying Q, let us apply delta and we get the Q. We can do that also. Yes. This is called displacement <coughs> okay. So rather than applying a force, we are applying a displacement. And whatever force is required to give that displacement, that we are using. Then what will happen? Then we will get Now what is happening in case of what? Displacement is applied. Displacement is applied? Not force. In case of earthquake, it is force is applied or the displacement is <laughs> Why you can say that? I will discuss that earthquake is causing acceleration, so it is causing inertia force. <coughs> inertia force is a force. How it is applying displacement? So the earth is moving. Right. The building is trying to trying to be in its original position. So that is the inertia. But the force, I cannot say the force, but uh, the demand is in terms of displacement. Means this ground is moving continuously, but building is trying to uh, maintain its original position. So this, that is the inertia. That phenomenon is the inertia that it is trying to maintain. You compare it with wind. Suppose I go on applying increasing wind velocity. I apply wind, let us say I am testing it in wind tunnel, I go on increasing the wind. Okay. So as soon as the wind will reach here, okay, there is a force. Suddenly it will collapse. Yes. You go on increasing the wind velocity, it will collapse. What will happen in case of earthquake? If the earthquake force reaches at this level, SA into W reaches this force will it collapse? No, it will reverse. Then after that, what? what is the difference in the two? When I have applied same column, in one case I am applying a wind velocity. Okay. In another case, I am applying an earthquake. And this earthquake also I am increasing gradually. The wind also I am increasing gradually. <coughs> yeah, nature is different. What is the difference in that nature? Reverse case. Reverse So, Sorry? Frame of reference. Frame of reference. Which we have observed. I put it at that. What do you mean by frame of reference? In case of wind, the building is uh, static and the force is at that 
when the earth is itself is moving, then how can we determine the force and with which respect we will determine the force that this force is coming to it? Will it only get in this case? There is no negative velocity. There is no negative velocity. Only no negative velocity. Yes. That's true. But why it is failing in wind, not failing in earthquake? You have told me the differences in the two rolling. But how that difference is leading to failure in one case and not failure in the other case? So due to reversal of stress in the one direction, the structure will make. Actually, earthquake is a decreases quantity and the resistance of. I never fifty shares was not about that. Not about fifty shares. The resistance offered by the earthquake in the acceleration against the acceleration. Isn't it is the energy dissipation with resistance we cannot provide in uh, the motion. You were saying something. This is probably in between. Yeah, you were saying something. So, so would you like to? In the case of wind, due to the uh, direction of force in the wind direction, the building the uh, the force acting on build, building may like it will reach up to its capacity and it structure may yield and all, like it, the behavior behavior will be something like that, like that. But in case of earthquake, the due to irreversible, the structure will behavior in both directions. Sir, hmm. it is like a pendulum case. Yes. If I am considering this building, in case of wind loading, mm -hmm. I will apply load. Mm -hmm. It will go 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 like this due to monotonic flowing. Mm -hmm. When it reaches to theta u, it will get collapse. Mm -hmm. In case of earthquake, what will happen? This way, force will come. Mm -hmm. It will be somewhere up to like. Let's say theta u, okay. but not up to theta u can provide resistance. Okay. When it uh, go back, then again reverse direction it comes to main position again. It again go here up to theta u. When this displacement is up to theta u, theta u, it can resist uh, um, that energy by using the and all those things. Think about two cases. I have a flat surface. I have kept a ball here. I have this surface and capital ball here. Okay? This is unstable equilibrium. This is also equilibrium, but unstable equilibrium. This is neutral. Suppose it's paper, this ball is light weight. Okay, it does not have much weight. You apply wind from this side. What will happen? It will continue. It will continue to form, yes. and it will finally fall. Yes. What will happen here? Just small load. Small wind, and, and then it will fall. fall. Okay. Think of this. And then I am applying wind. What will happen? And come back. So this is our type 1, this is type 2, strain hardly, and this is type 3, strain soft. So why it will come back when the uh, wind load is continuously? Yes, yeah, so if wind, when we remove the wind, or if the wind is too much, then it can go and fall down here. Here also if you go on increasing. Now in which case the maximum resistance you are expecting? Second case. Second case. Third case, minimum. Now think it like this. That this, I have put that ball on this and I am shaking it. Will it fall down? No. Here? It, it can. It can, but you can save it even here also. If you are shaking it properly, you can, you can make it not fall down. Even here. How? Put it and then do some practice. Okay. You do practice when ball goes this side. Put your paper this side. When ball goes this side, put your paper this side. So you do do practice. So if you do a good practice, you can make the ball stable. Okay. So if it is static, perhaps it will not be stable. But if you are moving it, okay. So when uh, a performer is walking on a uh, rope, okay. If he is static, he will fall down. Yeah. But he is moving. 
so when it is moving when he is in dynamics okay dynamic equilibrium then it can survive same thing happens in case of earthquake so in case of earthquake because it is reversible motion okay but we can we have to understand that in type 2 if we have strain hardening it can resist higher earthquake okay if it is elastic perfectly plastic okay it is somewhere in between and in type 3 its capacity is going to reduce okay but it doesn't mean that as soon as it will reach at the peak it is going to fall down okay so now you can interpret that here that in type 3 also if it is wind type of loading or gravity loading as soon as the loading will reach here it is going to fall down but in case of earthquake it can continue to resist earthquake <coughs> even beyond it is not going to fall so second type and third type hmm. if i consider delta u or delta theta u hmm. for both the cases it can be same theta u will be same hmm. but same theta u here will reach under smaller ah, smaller earthquake so the application of force in the <coughs> both both the cases you can uh, cannot judge uh, just with, uh, on screen just by seeing this you can't tell uh, because it will depend upon the frequency so how you are shaking it okay so it, it is not only depending on the acceleration how much acceleration you are doing at what frequency you are shaking okay that will also come so it will depend upon the earthquake time history earthquake ground motion record okay that at what level of force or what level of earthquake it is going to fail okay so this is a desirable case this is okay this is undesirable but undesirable doesn't mean that it will fail as soon as it will okay some resistance to earthquake it can also offer beyond yielding also but that resistance is going to be the smallest of these three okay any other question are you comfortable up to this sir here you plotted this deflected shape hmm. uh, while considering beam as engine hmm. uh, here also the roller so when we apply this load on this it should move there in translation why it is not moving it is moving. You have not moved. I have moved. My road, my thing has moved. The green color is the move position. Then for uh, for isolation diagram, you are taking uh, you are change. Uh, then it can't be the, But you are taking for the drawing this diagram. Here, this point. You are talking about this case. Uh, so in this case, the beam will not move, but the bottom end of the column will move towards left. And the top end will move towards right. Yes, but that beam is not moving. Now. So how can we transfer this to this? Let us say I have this case. How much will be this displacement? Q h by 2 whole Q over 3 E i C. Okay. And same will be this. So how much will be total? This delta C 2 into Q h by 2 whole Q. Over 3 is that I am waiting. The question is that while plotting from this diagram to this diagram, I am coming now to the next diagram. What is happening? How much is this? Q h by 2 whole Q over 
3 EIC and how much is this? This is also same. And how much is delta? Delta C. Delta C is this much. Same delta C in this case also you will get. But in this case, the D will go in each direction. Right. Yeah. We are interested in <coughs> the movement, total movement between the bottom of the column to the top of the column. Yeah. We are trying to determine the interstory drift. So interstory drift is floor to floor so, or mid height of the story to mid height of the story. Yes. <coughs> when uh, when I am moving from this diagram to this diagram to calculation of this uh, delta C, uh, I have considered by new diagram sum for, for both these cases. Then I will change that by support condition. But he, here in this case, there are rollers. They are moving mm -hmm. along this direction. Here it is not moving along this direction. Right. Then how can I uh, sh show that this diagram and this diagram are equal for calculation work? For that only I will show you now. How you will establish equivalence of two structures? By plotting the welding moment diagram. And by plotting the deformations, if the welding moment diagrams and the deformations are same, the structures are same. But here the deformation is not same. It is going it is same. same. Which deformation is not same? Its direction deformation. Suppose these boundary conditions I have not shown. Mm -hmm. Only difference is the boundary condition? Yes. Okay. So let me remove this boundary condition. From deleting this boundary. Just I have deleted the boundary conditions. All the boundary conditions I have deleted. Can you tell me the difference between these two? There is no difference. So they are equal. Only difference is in the boundary conditions. Ah, yes, boundary. That means these boundary conditions, when I apply these boundary conditions and the forces, the structure is subjected to the same deflected shape. Because deflected shape is same in both the cases. So that's why these structures are identical. Only difference is in the boundary conditions. And when I am changing the boundary conditions, I am changing my reference point, I am changing the forces accordingly. How to decide when to change the boundary condition and when to change the reference point? It's your choice. You can do both ways. If you can establish that these two structure, structural shapes are same, then it's your choice which condition you want to consider. So you can do it like this, you can do it like this. Your choice. Both are repeated. Both are same. So can we move forward or there is any more questions? So once show the whole picture. Uh, means building. No, no, no building. For section we are considering M phi diagram. Right. Along the length we are considering M theta diagram. Along the length. Right. For a member. Ah, yes. Again then along the length there are different different moments. Uh, then it is now there is problem in visualization. Like in case of like BMB, SAP, and depiction. While seeing this, we can visualize everything at a one picture like this. Mm -hmm. BMB, there you SAP, there you deflection. Mm -hmm. Here, can I analyze looking at one section, this is MX. Then, then here from uh, section, there is movement of resistance corresponding to that capacity MC. When it will exceed, it will fail. Here I am not able to visualize all this, how it is getting converted from section M hat to M theta and M theta to M delta. We are not making any change along the member. So if this member, let us take let me take the example which you have taken. That example itself. This example itself. So under this it is going to deform delta. Okay, you can plot the relationship between W and delta. Yes. You can plot the bending moment diagram. What you have plotted, I am taking that itself. So this BMD and SFD will remain same. I am not making any change here. Ah, yes. Only thing is that the maximum bending moment where it is occurring. If this bending moment 
increases to such a level that any fiber in the section here, this section only I am drawing here. So any fiber here, either steel or concrete, any fiber of material needs, then what will happen? It will not get further load. So after that, what will happen? Will there be any change to the BMD? No, BMD will not. Will there be any change to the assembly? No. But there will be a change to the delta. Okay. So the deformed shape will change after that. There will not be any change to BMD and SMT. How that deformation will occur? This delta, delta will depend on tan theta curve. I have told you we can take it as two cantilevers. You can take as these two cantilevers. Okay. Same BMD, SFT, whatever we have done, we can continue using those. So, but here we will consider plastic. So, delta will depend upon m theta, m theta will depend upon m phi at that section, or rather different sections, m phi at all the sections, where it is elastic, there you can uh, assume the uh, phi to follow the same curve as m, other points it is different. So you will get m phi at different curves, m phi at different sections you will get from what? F versus F. <coughs> Stress versus strain. And sir, uh, what are you calculating in assignment 1, m phi, that curvature is getting constant uh, throughout the uh, for particular section curvature. Epsilon cc upon epsilon mm -hmm. e plus d. It is getting constant. Getting constant means? It has constant values on curvature. So at this section, yeah, this section may be anywhere. Ah. Okay. So on any of these sections, you are getting this curvature. Yes. So what is your question? Now, now if I am considering curvature means what? Right of change of slope. Right. If I, if I am uh, taking curvature at this point, uh, at between those these points, mm -hmm. what I have to determine first, I have to determine theta here, theta here, then this radius of curvature, mm -hmm. then this d theta for this length dx, this will be my curvature, right. I equal to d theta yeah. right. upon uh, dx. Right. Then I again take this point and this point, then it will be again difference. Then how it is getting constant? Constant? Where I have said constant? Constant, I have calculated at every point. You have calculated it d theta. Huh. Huh? Huh. Take a limit. You have studied limits huh? Huh. in uh, 12th as well as huh. calculation. So take d theta tends to 0. Okay. Take that limit. Then you take tangent. So it is basically d theta or delta theta by delta x limit. Limit extends to zero. Extends to zero. That is the condition which is giving us the curvature. That is condition. But when we putting limit extends to zero, it means we are taking one point. Yes. We are considering one point, right? And theta is the uh, curvature is the rate of change of this. Uh, That's what limit is. That limit is giving you the change at that point. Okay, and in one point. So actually, this is limit. It is not at x delta x equal to zero. Okay, it is limiting case. Limiting case when delta x tends to be zero. It's very very small. That's basics of calculus. Ah, x when delta x tends to small to zero, hmm. it means it is lying here only. Then it is the only slope of tangent only this. Which no. Dx is small but not zero. Limit, when we say limit delta x times to zero, it doesn't mean it is equal to zero. Otherwise, you would have written equal to zero. There would not have been any calculus. Okay. Life would have been very easy. Okay. Newton created all this problem. So there is a problem between delta x is equal to zero and limit delta x times to zero. There is a difference. What is the difference? That on this elastic curve. 
of the beam when we are taking we are taking two points okay and this is delta x so even if delta x tends to zero these points will become very close to each other but not same point so that's you have to visualize ये थोड़ा सा दिमाग खराब करने वाली चीज है थोड़ा इसके लिए थोड़ा दिमाग को स्ट्रेच कि ऐसा कैसे होता डिस्टेंस इज जीरो स्टिल दीज आर टू पॉइंट्स सो देर आर टू पॉइंट्स वेरी वेरी क्लोज टू इच अदर ओके ऑलमोस्ट जीरो बट नॉट जीरो ओके देन यू कैन सी दैट दिस डिफरेंस दिस स्लो एंड दिस स्लो दिस डिफरेंस दैट विल बिकम कर So whatever is uh, we are showing in the section, it is delta x equal to zero. Right, right. At this point, when delta x near this point becomes zero, when delta x near this point becomes zero, when delta x near this point becomes zero, like that. So curvature goes on changing along the length of the beam. Okay. And when you, uh, when I want to give my curvature corresponding to this moment, hmm. uh, when I consider section corresponding to EMU, it will be high. When I consider field moment in section, that will be corresponding to phi r at that corresponding moment, right. and I will compare uh, whatever the moment coming from B M P with this field and Y M P. Right. Okay. From that theta u and theta u, and here uh, where, I, where I can see theta u and uh, theta y. Where? In deflected shape. Deflected shape. Suppose you go on increasing here. Oh, then the moment the plastic ring will form here, and then after that, what will happen? That this curve, initially till it has not yielded, okay, it will be a continuous curve. But when the yielding will occur, this will be continuous as well as a smooth curve. When yielding will occur, the deformed shape will be continuous, okay, but it will not be smooth. So a peak will form. Like, and then you can see that here the theta is this change in the slope is up. Theta y. This will be theta y. No, that will be theta p. The plastic deformation. So whatever deformation is occurring here at this king, hmm. this hinge, that is your plastic deformation. Oh. Okay. When I am further going the load increasing, hmm. this theta will. Sorry, be I have plotted wrong. This is. I plotted it on bending moment diagram. It is not bending moment diagram, but rather here. So the deformed shape is going to be like this, and then a king will form. And theta u when you increase further away. All right. When you put this this theta, this will go on increasing. Yes. When it will reach theta, theta p, full theta p is adjusted. Then it will fail. It will rupture. It will fall. Okay. Any other angle? No. Right. So let's consider now the full building. But before going to the full building, we have to do some other assembly. Can you do this assembly? Can you plot the deformed shape and Q versus delta for this assembly? Please plot the deformed shape. How this is going to be formed? It is similar to the previous one. Only thing is that one beam I have removed, isn't it? Left side beam is not. Rest of it will remain the same. So can you plot Q versus delta for this case? Let us say the beam is yielding first, and this capacity is M B. This is E I B, E I C, E I C. This is L by two, and this is H by two. Plot Q versus delta. Okay. This point as a roller. This is a roller support. This is a roller support. So it will move. 
it is free to move horizontally but it can't move up and down so please plot the deformed shape in this case and continue the, in the same manner as we have done for the previous First calibrate this reaction. This will happen if there are for the beam here. There is no beam here. So it is a candidate. This also you can divide into two. Let's first assume that the column is rigid. So when column will be rigid? The column will be formed like this. It is rigid column and the beam will rotate like this. Beam will bend like this. This is our delta B, which you can obtain by taking out this angle. Okay. Second case, the beam is rigid. The column is flat. Okay. 
Then what will happen? This portion of the beam is going to deform like this. Sorry, column is going to deform like this. This portion of the column is going to deform like this. Here it will be vertical. The tangent will be vertical because it is connected to the beam. Okay. So this angle will remain 90 degrees. Here this angle will remain 90 degrees. So this is the deform shape and this deformation is because of the column deformation. So this will be delta C and delta will be delta B plus delta C as we have done earlier. The only difference is that earlier there was a beam this side also. Now that beam is not there. Beam will also translate as it is. Yeah. The beam will also move. So the beam will also move. Yes. Sir, uh, we are generally the structures, uh, it's completely rigid. Why don't that completely rigid means? In structure, it generally uh, doesn't, we cannot see it bending like this. So, uh, like you are assuming, uh, sometimes column is rigid, sometimes beam is rigid. So, in structure, like uh, how... In a structure, neither beam is rigid, nor column. <coughs> if you look here, this is structure. Neither the beam is rigid, nor column is so, uh, for, easy, uh, for, calculation for calculation purpose only, first we assume that the beam is rigid or the column is rigid and then we assume that the beam is rigid. So we convert it to two components then because it becomes easier for us to interpret. That's, that's it. But it's not real case, right? Neither this is real nor this is real. But when you combine those two, then it becomes real. Our real case where beams and columns both are rigid, we are dividing it into two unreal cases. In one case, we are assuming the column to be rigid, and the other unreal case, we are assuming the beam.
whatever is the structure, whatever is the distribution of moment of inertia or the cell, only three things you will describe to solve. What are those three things? Equilibrium, mm -hmm. compatibility. Mm -hmm. What is constitutive law in this case? F versus epsilon is a constitutive law. Based on that, we have to write M5. So M5 becomes the constitutive law for a section. Okay. And then M theta becomes the constitutive law for the mass. So it will follow the M theta part. Okay. It will follow uh, equilibrium. It will follow compatibility. Using these three things only, you can analyze any structure, any complex distribution of sizes, span, kind of application of the load. All those you can do. Only thing is that in some cases, manual analysis may not be possible. In that case, we have to go for Good. So, can you give me Q Y and delta Y? Q Y you will achieve when your beam is yielding. Beam does not last. Okay, for the sake of the let me write down delta B. How much you have received? Got delta B? Q? EIB. Q H is period. And delta C? Q H Q upon query I C. Okay? How much will be QB? Sorry, Q by? You can get from here. Moment here is 2QH by L into L by 2. That you equate equal to MB. So you will get QY. How much is QY? How much was QY in the previous case? 2MB. So then you can calculate delta Y. For this value of QY, you substitute here, you will get delta Y. So this assembly is taking half the load as compared to the assembly which we have analyzed earlier. The cross, the full cross. As compared to full cross, it is taking only half.
If you are not able to get anything, ask. Huh? Done? Q and squared over 6a. That's what we have got. How? But you have to substitute. Yes, that is okay, but substitute Q as m b y by h. Sorry? From the reinforcement which is provided in the same. Huh? Yes, somewhere. Here we are assuming it is the MBY. Okay. We are assuming that let us say MBY is 1000 kN meter. This MBY will come from the analysis of the section of the beam. So the force is varying. We are determining that value of the force at which the yielding is taking place. And what would be the corresponding displacement? So how much is delta y in terms of mdy? Mdy h n. Mdy h n. H L L upon six E I V oh, upon six E I V E I V plus oh, sorry, pura. So, will it not be inside? No. no. Okay. okay. Plus M B Y M B Y get a square H square upon two E I V. Yeah, I see. Ah, yes. So this you can also write as M B H over six E. Okay. L over I B plus H over two one. So it is forming in B. Suppose it is forming in column. Then I can add it much better. Then how you will obtain? Then M C equal to uh, this uh, Q into H by T. Q into H by T will be M C. So you will get Q in terms of M C H by two. Substitute that here. You will get this. Yes. Displacement when the beam achieves 
θ u. Okay. The total displacement you have to calculate when beam is reaching its ultimate ultimate location. So how much is delta u? Delta y plus theta b or theta b theta b p into y h theta b p into h plus there will be anything no. The column, will it cause any additional deformation? No, because the force does not increase. So the deformation in the column will remain the same. Only thing is that there will be additional deformation because of the rotation, plastic rotation, which is occurring at the end. Okay? So, can you now take up This assembly? Sir? Can yes. How to uh, get Q u corresponding to the type? Okay. Suppose it is condition 1, okay, where it is elastoplastic, then it will remain same as Q1. Hmm. If it is different condition, then you will have MBU. So you can calculate it in terms of MBU. So that will be MBU, okay, by H. Q u will be and the u by x using the same equilibrium which we have done earlier. Only thing is that at the end, in place of m b y, it will be now m b u. So, sir, why I show the graph I have assumed it to be elastoplastic. It can be any of the three. So, that will depend upon the constitutive law for the beam section. So, in the beam section, Moment curvature curve is elastoplastic, it is water. If it is strain hardening, it will be different. If it is strain softening, it will be different. So, here theta BP into H, here also in the case of theta BP, my theta B is QH by H, so Q will be Q1. Sorry, theta? Theta BP into H. Right. Theta by theta B. Theta BP will be QP. No, theta bp will come from the section only, not from here. It will come from m theta of the section. So, m b versus theta b, when you plot, this is theta b y, and this is theta b u, and this is theta b p. <coughs> Yes. In this, uh, this external load is plus external load, uh, unlike this example. So the ductility of the system should be lower. The ductility of the system should be lesser than this. this you mean ductility of the system? If we take ductility of the beam same, and the ductility of the system should be less than is lower than the ductility of the previous. Okay. Maybe. If it is low. Yes. What does it mean? But this hole is a part of some system. Right. So when something fails, then the. So what does this mean? That ductility of this assembly is less than the ductility of this assembly. What does that mean? That will fail first. So this beam here, this is going to. Okay. Now let us do this top one. Hmm. 
Please plot the deformed shape and then Q versus delta. Not here. It will bend like this. If it will bend like this, tension is on this side, it is tension is on this side. So this will be not cut. When you are taking column is rigid. Okay, then plot it. Yes. Make the column rigid. Oh, this is rigid. Yeah. So but here then compatibility is not satisfied. But here okay. So the angle has to remain 90 degrees. So the deformed shape in this case. When you have a column as rigid, this is our delta V. Okay, and you can see that this angle has to be 90 degree. And when the beam is rigid, assemblage which we have done. Earlier I removed one beam. Here I have removed one beam and one column. Okay. So using the same method you can plot Q versus delta for this case also.
So we already know the value of theta root from that now that notation is taking place just at that point. So there is no deformation cause beyond that. The deform rotation is happening at that point and that rotation is the inside different Shape for this case. All these are subsets of the first one.
please plot the deformed shift and then calculate qy if we are assuming that here also the beams are moving fast. column is deforming like this. So this angle here, this has to be 90 degree. So this will deform like this. This will deform like this. So that this angle becomes 90 degree. Not like this. Then this angle will become acute. You can also think here, when you consider the column to be rigid, have to be at 90 degree here. And this is going to be your delta B. Then when B is rigid,
So although it is unannounced, but you know it. What is this? What it is going to be? So many videos of rescue we are seeing at the moment and people are found. So when they are reaching there, where they find uh, living people, where, at which location in the building, where they are found. So look at that. So that can help you in developing a strategy that if earthquake comes, where should you go at that time? So that there are chances that in 5 days, even 10 days, 12 days after, they are getting people alive. What do you think if this type of earthquake comes in northern India, let us say this part, the situation will be similar, worse or better? More or less similar. Okay, so 
If it is Rodki, let us say, where we have aluminum. Mm -hmm. Aluminum, soil, soil. Uh, what period you are expecting? The peak period. Or the period corresponding to peak spectral acceleration. It depends on the site, how deep it is. Okay? So if it is aluminum site like this, there will be low frequency vibrations in the earthquake. So short buildings will simply move around like this. That happened in Nepal. Nepal, even very low uh, strength, low rise buildings were not affected in Kathmandu. The reason was that in Kathmandu, there is very deep aluminum. And the period of the ground motion was something like 5 seconds. Okay, the peak which we are assuming between 0.1 second to 0.5 second, that was 5 seconds. Yeah. So you can easily imagine if a building is having 0.2 second or 0.3 second or even 1 second period, the energy is much beyond that, nothing will happen. But if you have a 20 story building or 50 story building, that will be done a lot. So it depends on the site period. Then of course it depends on the type of construction. So base shear in case of a high-rise building is going to be more. Okay. And if those columns which are designed are not able to take that much base shear, it will fail. So presuming that neither our low-rise buildings are being made as per code, nor our high-rise buildings are being made as per our code. So in that case, if you are in hill. Okay, where you have rock, limited in high rise building. If you are in flat area, live in a low rise building. I mean, where you have aluminum. So, there the low rise buildings are safer. Another advantage of low rise buildings is that earthquake gives you 30 40 seconds. Okay, initial 10 20 seconds you get where a strong wave does not come. A strong wave comes after 10 20 seconds. So if you are in a low-rise single story building, run outside, if you can. But if you are sleeping, it is in the night time, you can't. If you are sleeping, an earthquake comes, fall down from the bed. That's the easiest thing you can call it. So turn, fall down from the bed, lay parallel to the bed. Suppose you are laying here, and if this collapses, so it is difficult, but some volume it will occupy. There is a possibility that there is a gap created here, and in that gap, you may be resting. You may be there for some days. Otherwise, this building only solution is that the building we have to design and construct in such a way that it should not collapse. That's the only. There is no other. Okay, so we will continue from here. Please <coughs> complete all these and also think about those cases which you are talking when EIA is different, when uh, span is different, when height is different, and Q force is also. So I can give you an example of having a home exercise, which all of you can do now. Yeah. 
cantilever. And this cantilever, you already know how to do it. That, that was the first thing we did. Okay. So next class when we meet, we will learn how we can now get. Now we know the Q delta curve for all the assemblies. How we can get the Q delta curve or base shear versus delta curve for whole of the building. Okay. That we will discuss when we meet tomorrow at the in the meantime, please think about this. Try to do this. Well, the story here is acting here, and then a floor load Q is also acting. Okay. So it will also be similar. Only thing is that the shear force in the bottom column will be different, in the top column it will be different. Okay. And you can calculate this reaction here. This reaction will be because of V and because of V plus Q. So, rest of the procedure will remain same. So, you can do for this case as well. So, the height is H by 2. The height is H by 2 and L by 2, same.